Hey, what's up everyone? We are live. It is Sunday night and we are going to wind down your weekend. It has been a very, very busy week here at Bat City. We're going to tell you all about it as we start talking about some great things that happen and some awesome events we did and of course this week's new comics. As always, I am your host, Small Press Shan, and with me is the wonderful Wednesday Phil. What's up, Phil? Hello, hello. How's it going? Good. How has how has your week? Before we get into all the craziness that was Bat City this week, how was your week? Uh, it was a week. It's a week and a month <laughs> in a year. <laughs> I don't know. Happen. They all start to blend together. Like I today, I I blinked. And I was like, oh, we're almost at the end of January already. It That's feels crazy. like time is moving very quickly all of a sudden. Uh, I don't know if that's a Florida thing. Uh, but I've also uh, been reading a lot of comics lately. I've been diving back into the world of comics. I kind of took a break. And uh, outside of, like, I would read everything here every week. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't go outside of work and read. Well, this doesn't work. But I, w- I would go outside <laughs> of the walls of the shop. And I, would, I wouldn't really read much. But kind of amped it back up. I'm uh, starting to form a theory about The Punisher. Ooh. So I've been reading that new series by Jason Aaron, and it is bonkers. It is very bonkers, but I'm loving it. Nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, it was a crazy week here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you were very busy. I was like, hey, you guys want to hang out? And you were like, not this week. Yeah, I was like, I, I think I sent you the list of everything yeah. we had planned. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. like, more things came in on that. Um, we, of course, had our chance to go to the um, Partners in Education, the Business and Education Awards put on by a Manatee Chamber of Commerce um, this week, which was really cool. We got to see all of the businesses in the community that – do things for the local school districts and work with them. And there were some amazing winners of things from helping the teachers get the coffee breaks and things they need all the way up to putting books in every single classroom to there's just an incredible uh, karate instructor who his dojo goes into the schools and kind of works with the kids to not only teach them karate, but to use that as a way to give them confidence and teach them respect and uh, patience and things like that, which I thought was a really incredible thing. Um, so we got to go to that which was a lot of fun and then um, we met with a school this week about curriculum we could develop for their their school which was a lot of fun Um, we got to do a story time a superhero story time with the Braden River Library and do a comic writing workshop with their tween art class which was really great there was uh, 27 people at that workshop and wow. it was awesome. Um, shout out to our volunteer Josh who went with me um, and was helping the kids with defining some of the movement in their characters. And we're really excited because we get to go back next month and do a second part to the workshop and kind of give them um, more more details. So it's cool because they got to split their workshop in two months and, and really just like go to detail with it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, oh my gosh, what we had comic making workshops here this weekend. Uh, we had a good workshop on Saturday morning, which was a lot of fun. That was one of our in-shop, open to the public, free workshops, which was really great. And then uh, yesterday afternoon, we had a group of Girl Scouts, uh, one of the troops, out to earn their comic creation badge. Just super exciting, um, and our we I don't I we had a couple other people in this week that had some really exciting things. So there's going to be some cool coverage of Bat City. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell like where it is yet, um, but there's some cool things coming up with uh, some Bat City coverage that we had some fun interviews that we got to do that I can't wait to see how um, those play out and where they show up. So we'll be sharing those when those things come. And then um, today was the uh Bradenton Punk Rock Flea Market. I got this super snazzy shirt. Um, it was over at Ascura. It was put on by the the Lakeland uh, Punk Rock Flea Market people. Okay. They they kind of travel around and put it in different places now. And there was like 40 vendors and bands all day. And we had the best spot in the house because we were right outside the doors to Ascura. And they had the doors open. So we could see in and see the bands playing and we could hear them but it was like the perfect distance where it wasn't like too loud you could still hear like customers talking and everything you could talk to yourself if you needed to um but you could still hear all of the music so we got to see all of the bands playing 
from like the bus distance and then get to meet like literally like every person that came in. It was so crowded. So um, as always, the shout outs to volunteers, shout out to um, our amazing volunteer, Jamie, who came out as a uh, Gwenham and looked totally incredibly fierce. And then, of course, shout out to Mike, our volunteer who came out and loaded everything up. For wow. us, showed up just to load things up at the end of the night and and bring it all back to the store. Which and then carried not only uh, I was like, well, we have these two bookshelves left. And he's like, oh, I'll carry one if you carry one. And I was like, cool. He's like, I'll take the heavier one. And I was like, oh wait, we have to take this fifty pound bag of sand back with us because it was so windy today. We had to come get like fifty pound sandbags from the hurricane yeah. to like hold the tent down. And I was like, oh, we gotta get that one, but don't put it in your car because it's still like leaks water from the rain the other day so he's carrying a bookshelf in one hand and a 50 pound bag of sand in the other and just like walking down the street with it and i'm like struggling with my one bookshelf <laughs> and i'm like we're doing a great job go team <laughs> like thanks for carrying all of the stuff yeah. and like um so it was it was awesome uh shout out to chad from uh the punk rock flea for setting up a great thing and shout out to Oscura for all the stuff they did um, to make it amazing and it absolutely was this was huge there was like I said so many people it was a great event for the, for the city and thanks for everybody who not only stopped at our booth but then also came over to the store to check out even more stuff there's so many people who were like uh do you just is seriously it's like right there and I'm like yeah it's like right there I'm like pointing because our booth was like where you could see the palm trees and the like a frame of the house and so I was like that building right there that's it and they're like I'm just gonna go right now and I'm like so all these people I was like okay uh and like there was some people who would ask for stuff and I'd literally text Josh and be like hey somebody's coming over they want this so this is where it is if you don't know because it's like crazy stuff wow, okay. but yeah it was so fun um I loved it so much uh, a lot of great times so more to come there's going to be incredible things coming up at bat city all month long and into next month and um we're going to drink some wine tonight yes this wine so last week on the show <laughs> phil asked me if we ever drank white wine on the show and i said no because i don't really like white wine and uh he was like oh we should try it sometime so our incredible friends uh nick and april over at mysterium brought us a bottle of wine. I'm going to shout out them first. They are at Mysterium Escape Rooms over in Sarasota, right across from the movie theater downtown on the, the strip there. There's a bunch of incredibly cool uh, escape rooms and a nice like bar and everything that you can go hang out in. If you're in the area, definitely check it out. You can take your Bat City receipt uh, for any purchase here over there and get 20% off your escape room experience Monday through Thursday. Or you can bring your Mysterium escape room receipt to us and save uh, 10% off your purchase at a time. Hey. So uh, Nick was like, hey, and April were like, hey, you guys should try a white wine. So they went over to Mixon, Mixon Fruit Farms, okay. which is here in Bradenton. In. And it's a local fruit farm. Apparently, they're known for their orange uh, ice cream. Like, they have, like, an orange dream single mm. style ice cream. Um, and mm. people, like, always talking about it. So, they were like, you have to go over there and try the ice cream. But they are also a winery. And so, they decided we needed to try this white Zin. It's a white Zinfandel, but it's raspberry flavored. And it's made with the fresh fruits. Like, they actually blend the fruits and everything there. So, I mean, it, it, I obviously it's more fruity, so I enjoy it. Right, you actually just took two drinks. It's less wine and more fruit, mm -hmm. and I think y'all enjoy more wine than fruit. If that makes any sense at all, it doesn't. But there's like, whatever y'all like is what makes me what made me think of <laughs> wine as like a child. When I took the a sip dryness. of like, yeah, where I like and I remember the, the first time I took a sip of my stepmom's wine, and I was just like, oh, that's disgusting. I never want this again. But this doesn't make me think of that at all. And so this, I misserved this to you because this should have actually been chilled, but I wasn't here all I'm day. Out. So this, a white wine should be more chilled than this. Um, Ooh, if it was cold, that it would be, be delicious, yeah. right? And and Ooh. so it's not, it's not cold because I That's forgot okay. to put it in there, but it's still good. Um, and I, it does. It kind of tastes like. I mean, honestly, it kind of tastes like candy. Um, it tastes like a melted Jolly Rancher. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes like when you put a Jolly Rancher in a Zima. <laughs> That's what it tastes like. It'd be like if I dropped a Jolly Rancher in like cough syrup. <laughs> not so, but it's not thick. It's very no, thin. No, 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 no. It is, but it's, like, it is it's a, got that kind of like medicine aftertaste for me. That's the alcohol. 
that, yeah, it's like that's the eight point five percent alcohol that you're tasting. Yeah. Not bad. Um, but this is good, and yeah, it's a it's a bl- it's considered a blush wine. It does say on there specifically to chill it, which again I failed at because I forgot. Um, chill wine. Huh? We don't think, to, we don't chill think to chill wine. And I thought it every time I saw the bottle all week long, like put this in the fridge. And then I left this morning for the flea and totally never did it. So that's on me. But it's still really good. Um, so it tastes delicious. Yeah. And it's nice. And they, uh, Nick wanted to get a white Zin and didn't really know uh, which one. And it was April who chose the raspberry. So thanks for both of you for. It's a great choice. For doing a great job. Yeah. We're going to drink this all night today. I'll and. See you we're gonna and you know we're gonna thank mysterium for getting us this wine and uh we got it if you're in the area again check out mysterium and also apparently check out mixon farms so, yeah yeah I'm, I'm, I'm i'm intrigued when you talked about the ice cream i figured I you would be <laughs> yes uh oh uh ram says happy lunar new year thanks ram um thanks nick for streaming us at the escape room and what's up marco thanks for joining in so uh, we are happy to have you all. We're going to talk about some comics. We're going to uh, pop into some of the things that are new this week and then uh, see where we're going. Oh, and Devin says, howdy, howdy, howdy. Hey, Devin, what's up? Thanks for watching and thanks for stopping by this week and hanging out with us. Um, all right, we're going to pop in this. We're going to get crazy fast. We're going to start with issue two of volume two of Chicken Devil from Aftershock. Now, this is, it's sometimes listed as Chicken Devil Volume 2 Issue 2. Sometimes it's Chicken Devils Issue 2. Yeah. Um, but if you don't know the Chicken Devil story, what do they need to know, Well, uh, This is for fans of, I'd say Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Like, if you really enjoy Breaking Bad, this is the book for you. It's about a guy who owns a fried chicken company, and uh, he gets sucked into some crazy drug-related violent adventures and it's magical you're here for the wonderful hayden sherman art which actually i don't think it's it's not on this volume Uh, volume Volume two two. it's not however they did work really hard to get an artist who has a similar style or who can mimic the style that hayden had set up so you still get some of the cool hayden sherman paneling yeah uh, that you come to know and love for chicken devils um so yeah i haven't actually started volume two yet so volume two volume one kind of ended with him you know oh i took out some of these bad guys and i'm gonna get away with it and volume two kind of opens up with the police like hey we know everything that you did uh we're aware of what you did and like these two detectives are like we're aware of what you did we appreciate it and we thank you for getting these criminals and stuff off the street how about we team up and we do it again And so now he doesn't want to be a part of this anymore. But these two detectives are like, hey, we do want to do this. So either you uh, get the get the game rolling and you participate in our battle to get everybody off the street or you uh, go to jail. So now he's being coerced once again into donning the chicken suit and taking down villains in town. I mean, what more do you need? You know, I don't know. And Brian Bucoletto is doing a great job of writing this story. It's just, it's yeah. it's so fantastically funny. And uh, in this particular issue, he's trying, his family all knows what happens now. happened now. So he's got, trying to get them all to uh, get on the Find My Family app on his <laughs> their phones. And his daughter like, keeps turning it off. So the whole time he's just yelling about his daughter not having her Find My Family app on. Like in every scene of the book, like no matter what's happening, he just keeps yelling about this app. And so it's hilarious. Great book, has everything you need. Um, so yeah, I would pick up volume one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely got trades of it. Yeah. and uh, I think we have trades of volume one. So easy way to jump in. Um, from Image Comics, we've got issue two of Hexware uh, coming at you. This is one of Tim Seeley's many new books. He's got a couple actually coming out right now. And this issue one kind of set the scene for us where we are in a world where people have androids that are doing all kinds of stuff for us. And in this in this world, this particular family that we're following has a a robot android that's a housekeeper. It's kind of like C-3PO and in their world they call it a witch wear because its job is to just ask you questions like which sweater would you like to wear or where would you like me to put this? Um, In issue one, some tragedy hits the family and the only person who feels like they can do anything to 
save the day, but also feels like their hands are completely tied in the process, is the witch wear robot, who's been a part of this family forever. And so they are now uh, taking matters into their own hands by taking on some witchcraft to find a way to be a little more sentient and maybe solve the family's problems. And uh, issue one kind of led us down that path of her doing that, which is, you know, the hex wear, because we're still software, androids, things like that. Uh, but issue two kind of opened up the world a little bit, and we learned that the other side of the tracks kind of situation in this book uh, might be a little more monstrous than I anticipated. Hmm. Yeah, I, I read um, a bit of issue one, uh, and I love the art in this book. It's fantastic. I mean, Tim Seeley writing a book, you know, you're never, you're never going to go wrong with Tim Seeley. And Tim Seeley's really leaning into monster lore right now. Like, that's a really big yeah. thing, you know, with West of Sundown and now this, um, and a couple of other things that he's kind of bringing monsters into play. And it's like, Tim Seeley is really like, let's just play with monsters. And you're seeing it uh, in this book. I love the main character, and there is a twist on how the magic works with this robot uh that I will not spoil for you. You have to read the book to figure out what the witchcraft actually does with this robot that's making it able to do these things. So check it out, Hexware. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be one of those heartfelt stories buried in like a lot of like crazy weird action moments. Okay. Um, up next, from Mark Millar and Image Comics, for $1.99, you can read issue two of Night Club. Yes, Mark Miller, who after his failed Netflix deal, which seems to not pump out anything, it just seems like that since he took that Netflix deal, nothing good has come of it, or they haven't even tried anything. But so he's going back to comic books a little bit more heavily. Um, he's got this and Nemesis Reloaded um, as part of the um, the new universe that he's creating. He's building towards an event. Uh, but Nightclub is a story of a kid named Danny who wants to be a YouTube star and thinks he can do it through uh, crazy stunts. And in the first issue, he rides his bicycle off the side of a building and breaks his arms and his legs and his neck. And they say, you know, he's going to be paralyzed forever. So uh, a detective comes in and bites him in the neck and turns him into a vampire. Uh, and so this issue kind of picks up right where issue one left off. Uh, that first issue, he's kind of going through his power set, kind of learning why he was turned into a vampire. Uh, and then in this issue, he does what like I feel like everyone would do if they got bit by a vampire, which is like, I'm going to go to my two best friends and then turn them into vampires. So this whole second issue is them basically now learning their power sets and kind of being caught up to speed uh i really enjoy this i feel like if you're a fan of spider-man mm -hmm. this is that character for you because he's kind of uh in that same vein very much like peter parker and miles morales and um yeah it's a great superhero uh i really enjoy this book uh, i was not a big mark millar fan is it miller or it's millar okay um so I was never a big fan of his back in the day, but now I'm way more intrigued with the stuff he's doing now. But yeah, I think this is a really fun book. I'm kind of curious to see how these characters will eventually be thrown in with some of the other characters. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend pick this up. I think it's only going to be four issues. So definitely check it out. Um, but yeah, it's been good. From Aftershock, we have a much anticipated, uh, finally here, issue four of There's Something Wrong with Patrick Todd. This is the story of Patrick Todd, who is a young teenage boy who can control people's minds. And in throughout the course of the series, he has been, it started with him controlling people's minds to rob banks and to do different things like that for him so that he could get all of this money. Um, and the problem was is that they started dying after he controlled their minds, not because of him, but because of something that happens in their brains that's messing with their minds. And so he's had a detective chasing after him this entire time, 
partially for the the robberies, partially because of these these murders, assumingly, that have happened. Um, but the, at the same time, we are finding out over the course of this book that the reason Patrick has been doing it is because his mom is in a, a rehab facility for having a, an Alzheimer's dementia type disease. And he can't afford to keep his mom in this facility anymore. And so he's actually been robbing all of these places uh, to try to get the money to take care of his mother. And that story, that heartfelt side of it, actually grows more and more, and we learn a little bit more each issue about what's been going on with Patrick Todd. But now we bring in, over last issue, we brought in a, a new character who has threatened Patrick and has coming for him. And so now we're in, like, we've got police chasing him, we've got bad guys chasing him, we've got him trying to save his mom. And so we've got all of this stuff that's definitely coming to a giant head at the end of the series, which will probably be the next issue because it is Aftershock and they're usually five-part miniseries. And so I don't know how Patrick Todd's going to get through, like, all of the stuff that he's got going Going on, but it's definitely been a, a great adventure to see uh, what his story looks like. Yeah, yeah. This is one I read issue one, and then I don't think I was here for issues two or three. Um, but it's definitely one I, I once it's all completed, I'll definitely read because I love the premise and that that main character Patrick is. I like him. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw this one your way, issue four of Kung Fu Legume from Keen Spot. Yes, uh, I am two issues behind on this one. I, I figured you were behind, but I know how much you love <laughs> this legume. So. I do, because Keen Spot's one of those publishers that I was, it's a lot of parody. Um, so I don't really read a lot of Keen Spot, but then when I stumbled upon this book, I was like, yes, I'm totally on board. Uh... But you have a can of beans floating through space, and it gets hit by a radio wave sending uh, kung fu stuff, uh, old kung fu movies and things like that, through this radio wave. And all of a sudden, you get a lagoon that knows kung fu, which, I mean, who doesn't want to read a story about that? And he crashes on Earth in the first issue and battles a grandfather. Um, to this young girl who is very talented at building robots and stuff. And it kicks off these wild, crazy adventures together. And they are currently trying to tackle a Lizard King type character. And in this issue, they have to fight one of his minions, who is a giant snapping turtle. Uh, a thing we were all just talking about. Yeah, and the dangers of snapping turtles. This is a giant snapping turtle who's part a uh, giant turtles part a uh, monstrous android so this is a fun issue again this is just all it's all humor the whole time and it's it's hilarious and it's just it's that light read that you put in the middle of your giant yeah stack. yeah definitely four issues in uh hopefully it's gonna go on forever <laughs> you know this will be another one of those hundred issue long series um because i feel like you could i feel like you, you could do you this really forever could. you could you could have beans fight everything um up next from Image Comics, we have issue three of volume six of I Hate Fairyland. Yeah, something like that. Five yeah. or six. I can never remember. Because it was 20 was the first series. Yeah. And yeah. I I think we're on six. Yeah. Six, six. This is six. Um, but I feel like we need to remind people that I Hate Fairyland is back, which is why I brought this. Um, if you've never read I Hate Fairyland, it is about a young girl who wishes that she could uh, go to Fairyland and just visit this magical place where all of the happiness and rainbows exist. And so she gets her wish and she is sent to Fairyland. And when you get to Fairyland, you get to go on a magical adventure where you meet all of the creatures you've ever wanted to meet. And the whole time is just this really simple task of finding the key to the door back to your room. Um, except our main character, Gert, Gertrude, cannot do it. So she ends up taking about 37 years to not accomplish the goal and is essentially like a 42 year old woman trapped in the body of like a seven year old girl or whatever it is a 45 year old woman and so Gertrude lives in fairyland for many of volumes of this story cannot get out um and then 
Now we have a new volume in which Gertrude has finally gotten out of fairyland and is trying to get back in. And this is Gertrude kind of a little bit older. She looks like she's about in her 20s now and she's realized that the real world sucks. And so she's taken a mission that may in fact get her back into fairyland. This is all of the ridiculous fun that you love from I Hate Fairyland if you've ever read it before. If you haven't, this is definitely a book that is is right up in there. I mean, like, if you're a fan of, I mean, even something like Snot Girl, where it's just kind yeah. of, like, the funny, like, ridiculous, like, what just happened, but I love, and I, I love it. Um, this is a book like that that's going to give you a lot of just fun humor and heartfelt moments all in the same time. Yeah. Also, if you're interested in reading I Hate Fairyland, Image has a really great deluxe hardcover edition that contains all 20 issues of that first uh, storyline. So you can pick it up. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, it's great. And we also have all the trades if you're more of a trade paperback yeah. person. Um, all right. So we've got some more amazing books. I don't even know where to start. So we're just going to dive into some spectacular books out this week. Um, we've got... Art Brute number two from Image Comics. This is from your creative team behind Ice Cream Man uh, coming together again to give us a new series about a man who is a detective in uh, the world of paintings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It? Well, they call him, I think they call him the Dream Painter. Yeah. Is, uh, is the name that he goes by. Uh, and he is asked to help solve a string of murders all surrounding art. And that first issue, it started with um, the Mona Lisa uh, was winking. And that yes. kind of set this whole thing in motion. And now he's teamed up with um, a detective. And they are going to try and solve this together. Uh, this issue, kind of, we get to see a little bit more of the detective's life. Yes. Um, we get to see a little bit more of her personal life. And it's mixed in with um, them being in the painting world, which they went into in issue one. So it's kind of like this nice little back and forth. Um, I love this book. I got to be honest, the book is super fantastic. I mean, it's one of those creative teams that you're always going to want to check out. The art's beautiful. All the characters are really great. He has this um, this mannequin, uh, which I believe is named Manny. Yes. I'm not mistaken. Well... It's like Manifold the Third or something. Yeah. Like it's like a like a four part name. <laughs> it's a really ridiculous. That name. It, it, yeah, and he he will correct you if you call him yeah. Manny or if you call him a doll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's just it's got everything you need. Um, crazy characters and and the dream world that they go into. I like this whole concept of, hey, you can go into the paintings and walk around in those worlds. Um, and this is cool because I even like the, uh, I can't ever say the artist's name. I think it's Matisse. Yes. Is the name of the artist that the, this yes. murder and this issue is centered around. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's really interesting. I think it's a cool way. We, I've noticed in reading all the books that we're reading right now, there's a lot of murder mysteries. Yes. Um, and I think out of all of those, this is a top tier murder mystery book for you. And I, I really like it because of the fact that it is that W. Maxwell Prince, like weird, mm -hmm. off the wall, like very eccentric story. But also W. Maxwell Prince has this wit that just keeps flowing and you don't know where it's going to come out. And suddenly like you're hit with something like really, really witty or really, really deep. And he's so good at that where you're like, oh, this is just a really strange book. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And then it's like, oh, my God, that was so profound. And yeah. I have no idea where it came from. And he does it so beautifully in this book, uh, just like he does in Ice Cream Man. And if you are an Ice Cream Man fan, you know that's an anthology. This is not. Mm -mm. This is a episodic, standard storytelling kind of book, So, yeah. which we don't see a lot of from W. Maxwell Prince. No, but he's... Two issues in. He's done a great job so far. Absolutely. Um, from Vault Comics, for the namesake of their horror imprint, we have the Nightfall Double Feature Issue 2. Back, uh, back at it with some of the greatest horror creators uh, in comics right now, for sure. Um, this is two stories in one book. The first story is written by one half of the autumnal team, uh, Daniel Krause, and it is a crazy story about um, a scientist and a priest working together to figure out why bones are suddenly appearing 
all over the world in weird random places. Like in this particular issue, uh, a guy is like, oh, every tree on our farm has bones in the middle of it. Like we don't know what's going on. Um, and so there's the government trying to figure it out. Scientists are trying to figure it out. Um, the religious people are trying to figure it out. And so they've all kind of come together. And this like weird team that doesn't really blend is is doing some research. And the way their research goes gets weirder and weirder as it goes along. And as usual, Daniel Krauss is just this master class in moving a story forward where you're like, how, where, what are we doing? And he just, you just keep pushing and pushing. And uh, this issue, uh, he's just once again showcasing how he's so good at that. And we're getting a little bit more information about what's going on. And yet at the same time, I'm like, what is going on? It's going to be crazy. Um, and then the backup story features the art of the second half of the autumnal team, which you know is a Bat City favorite book, um, and Chris Sheehan on art. And this story is about a family that is a blended family coming together. Um, they're on their way. I believe they're, they haven't gotten married yet. I think that the, the parents are, uh, uh, engaged and they're on a road trip in an RV and they end up stopping at this one place and when they get to this place the mom ends up getting drawn into an RV that belongs to somebody else and everything changes and some crazy stuff is going on and talk about not knowing what's going on I'm like where is this going I just know that I'm now afraid of road trips <laughs> apparently uh, Nightfall double feature this is it's if you're a horror fan you gotta have it. And this is an amazing Chris Sheehan foil cover that we're putting our fingers all over. Sorry, Chris. Uh, but That's the way it was meant to be. It was. I was actually just curious what the price point was. I don't even see it. Um, I think they're six ninety nine. Honestly, it might be five, six ninety nine. Huh. Let me see. Um yeah, I was always curious with these bigger nine ninety nine for oh, this. Wow. Oh, but that's because it's the foil cover. Oh, okay. The other one I think is six ninety nine. Wow, I think I the Chris Sheehan cover that. is specifically but that's my Chris yeah, Sheehan cover, foily. so I, I messed up my own foil fingerprint covers. I just need you to see it because it's so cool. Um I I I know, I know. I always have to I always I always gotta get my fingers on the Chris Sheehan ones, and then I'm like, why did I do that? Um, I thought I had dove into just number twos, but I lied to you. I was like, well, we're at the number twos and number ones. Let's dive in. I'm a liar. We're not there yet. Um, or we were, but I put this one in the wrong spot because I have to talk about the fact that West's first place from here is back and still excited. This is the, the second issue of it being back after a little bit of a hiatus. This is issue 10. Um, this is an image comics and uh this is basically kind of like the warriors is how it starts out where we've got a bunch of kids who are split up into their own gangs in a post-apocalyptic world we only know that if you hit 18 years old you can't stay in the society but we don't really really know too much more than that still like all of these issues and we are still kind of figuring out what is happening in this world because it's not the focal point. The focal point is kind of on the kids and the interactions between the different organizations. Um, I know this is one that – did you fall behind? Because I know you really yeah. love this book. Yeah. Um, this has been so great. In the last issue, we finally learned what happened to one of the characters who on the very first issue was like, I'm leaving. Um, and we're starting to see this, this whole arc seems to be following that adventure and the things that happen and how that all connects to where the story spiraled out of. So if you read the first arc of the book and you've been like, what is this? Story? Like, where did those characters go and what happened? We're finally getting that. We're also starting to see how a lot of the other like family dynamics for the different groups work, um, to, from the beginning. So this is, it's just, it's fantastic. Uh, Tyler Boss and Matthew Rosenberg is an all-star team together and you, you're just not going to go wrong with yeah. this book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, here you go. You can, you can go. <laughs> I know you, you are waiting. So from Scout Comics, issue two of Mr. Easter, and you have asked me when this book was coming out again, so. Yes, this falls into the, the category of filled books. This is about Mr. Issa, who is a time-jumping, well, portal-jumping uh, assassin. He has a, a little buddy that doubles as a uh, portal uh, and a gun, but he can also, like, help him jump to wherever he wants to go. 
And the two of them go around the universe and do all sorts of crazy things. And this one, um, he is battling some like creepy Mickey Mouse looking dudes. <laughs> Let me see if I can find the little Mickey Mouse guys. Yeah. They look like Mickey Mouse and they're vegans who are protectors of cheese or something like that. I mean, look, it's, it's all bonkers. Um, but, uh, it's really nice cause we get to, we're introduced to another character in the Mr. Easty universe, uh, an old school time friend from back when he was in the Assassin Academy, uh, his friend Bob, who has been brought into the story. Uh, so you get to see a little bit of the backstory of Mr. Easta, uh, as he continues on battling Dr. Bone, which is your giant corporation villain who's trying to take over everything. And this one's great because they're trying, he's tries to save, um, this like group of this planet, uh, or no, these people, uh, this alien, they're called like Zoinks or Zorks. But again, it's all wild and crazy. The art's wonderful. It's very colorful. You know, if you're reading, I hate Fairyland and you love that kind of art style. This is that next book to go to, uh, but a little bit more ridiculous. So it's kind of like um, if you kind of like Rick and Morty kind of added that flavor into the art style of I Hate Fairyland. It's it's a wild book, but it's a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, from Mad Cave, we have issue three of Nature's Labyrinth. Uh, this book always has phenomenal covers. Like the detail on the yes. covers kind of remind me 100%. of the, the detail that Bermuda had on their covers. Yeah. Um, but this has been a great book. This is your, um, we took a random group of people and we put them inside of a maze on an island and we're like, some of you will live and some of you won't kind of stories. Uh, and of course, like we're kind of seeing like, oh, this person is this and this person is this character, but there's 12 people hunger gamesing it through an island that's set up as a maze. And we're following specifically one girl who um, is lying about who she is. And we don't even really fully know who she is yet. We have kind of an idea. Um, but she is lying about who she is to everybody in the, so that she can be in the game. And she's trying to get this one particular person to survive the, the game with her. Um, and they've been going through the obstacles. And, of course, she's doing all the work. And this person she's trying to protect is doing nothing. And in this particular issue, they end up at a place that's known as, like, the safe haven. It's supposed to be one of those where, like, you get here, you can take your break, you can rest and recover. And they're like, but when the music starts for the jamboree, just know that all the rules in the game will change. And she's like, we need to go. We cannot stay here. This is dangerous. And the person she's protecting is like, no, it's totally fine. This is just a game. This is our safe spot. Like, haven't you ever played a video game before? And so you know, like, the whole time, like, something bad is coming. And honestly, the, this book is really good at building that tension where you're, like, as a reader, you're, like, yelling at the characters, like, something bad is coming. And as, like, a reader, you're also like, but I kind of want to see what that is. Yeah. And so it's it's so good. This is another one of those where I'm like, please just make a TV show out of this because this would make it. The characters are great. The the plot points and the twist are like, while well, some of them are, you know, the things I kind of expect, like that, oh, this is going to be the danger zone. Then it's like the way they do that is so completely different that I'm like, ooh, this would, this is good. You did a good job. And everything's weird and I love it and I can't wait to see who makes it out alive in Nature's Labyrinth? Yep, three issues in, still that time. Yeah, definitely beat that uh, three. Oh, three definitely, issue. never a doubt whether okay. or not you needed three issues for that one for sure. Um, up next, issue two of Fear of a Red Planet from Aftershock. You read both of these today? I did. Yeah, it was one of those that I I wasn't here for issue one. Um, but I tend to be drawn towards the sci-fi, you know, let's, uh, we've moved from earth mm -hmm. and the craziness of earth and now we're inhabiting other planets. Uh, and as I was saying early, murder mystery, murder here mystery. it is. Uh, there are, uh, it's mining on Mars and there's a lot of chaos and craziness and people are unhappy and major corporations and all the wonderful things that you would want tied into a murder mystery and it's all happening on mars and at the end of issue one the one guy in the book that you were like if 
if I had to pick someone to get murdered, it'd be this guy. His name's Riser. He's like that corporate kind of tattletale that no one likes. Um, and he gets uh, murdered at the end of issue one. And this picks up right where that leaves off. And now they got to do all the things that you have to do. Once you've discovered that someone's murdered, you got to figure out where the evidence is. You got to do an autopsy. You got to round up all the usual suspects. And that's what this issue is. It's like, hey, this guy's been murdered. The corporation wants us to figure out who it is. And that is where we are. Um, I enjoy this book. There are some very interesting characters in here that I can't wait to see how they develop them. Um, I, I'm kind of curious to see how they handle this in the full five issues. But I'm really excited to see who did it and open up this world a little bit so yeah two issues in I'm, i think it's worth picking up for sure yeah yeah um and lastly before we dive into the number ones is issue three of chroma from image comics you're behind on this I, right i only read issue one. Oh my gosh yeah. uh, i know i know by panel two of issue two everything that you were worried this book was going to be was destroyed <laughs> so uh and everything i thought it was going to be has kind of gone like in different directions but this is the story of our of a world where we have a, a king who is controlling the world by the colors in it and is trying to manipulate the people and kill them and do different things. So they've decided that they need to, like the, the people who are trying to survive in this world have decided that they need to just take out all color entirely. And so they live in a world of grayscale, essentially. Like they even cover their food in ash. And each year they bring out this, like a monster to sacrifice. And particularly in this issue, or this year they bring a monster but what our character at the beginning of issue one realizes that monster is not actually a monster it's just a little girl and she has two different color eyes and that's the thing and he looks into those eyes and it's like oh i've had this awakening because i've seen color and i realized that this is a scared person and it's this beautiful issue and then uh Things happen and he develops like this friendship and he starts to explore the world. And then uh, we are following what is happening as the girl who was the monster is now making an escape and trying to figure out um, where she falls. It's honestly, it's become a book about when everybody labels you a monster, do you have to believe that? And does it change who you are and does it change what you are? Um, and it's kind of just her constantly like maybe I deserve to die because I've been called this monster my whole life and, and maybe it all is my fault and maybe it isn't. It's a beautiful story. I honestly almost just moved it to my pick of the week right now um, <laughs> because issues one and two were in there though. So I was like maybe I, I was like do I need to put issue three in there too? Let's just say that I did um because this book continues to be beautiful and the way they use the black and white versus color in the story has just been phenomenal the whole way through uh we have issues one and two and three now so uh it's only a four-part series and they're so oversized too they are huge and you're getting beautiful color escapes when you, when you read it so okay now we're gonna go to number ones uh we are going to kick it off with immortal sergeant number one from image comics yes the new joe kelly book i um, always happy to see Joe Kelly doing something. I remember when I read I Kill Giants for the first time. And I was like, this story is so beautiful. I will read everything that this guy puts out. Um, and he comes in with this such a, a different change of pace from yes. I Kill Giants. Uh, this is the story of Detective Sergeant John Sargent. Who is your old grumpy detective who is on the brink of uh, retirement, mm -hmm. but also enjoys going out and drinking and bothering young children. Uh, he, he's a mess of a man, and you kind of just see a little bit of him going around town and interacting uh, within the police station and at the bar, um, you realize that he is somebody who a lot of people have different feelings about. Uh, and he carries around a shoe and an evidence bag, which is probably tied to something that haunts his past. Um, I am not really sure the tone of this book because it's very goofy in the way that it's drawn and some of the panels where you're just like, this is ridiculous. 
Um, but I also feel like there's kind of a serious side to it, but I'm not 100% mm-hmm. sure. Um, I think it's going to be like those movies, like like the one that uh, Seth Rogen did where he ended up having to go on his selling tour with his mom. Like when he was trying to pitch his product and he had to go uh, and pitch it and like he's on that trip and then it's like his mom has to go with him. And so it's supposed to be like this, you like comedy but it's also like a movie where he's trying to like build his business and stuff mm-hmm. i think you're going to get that kind of situation because yeah. his son is going to come into play in a big role in this and so i think and the whole thing is it's pitched as like a buddy cop story but it's him and his oh, son okay and so i think that um i think that's going to be a big thing is it's going to be like oh i have to deal with my son but i'm having these experiences and so you're going to get that comedy but you're also going to get those little bits of serious moment along the way and i'm sure it's going to be heartfelt in the end yeah Definitely. I, I highly recommend this one. I think you're going to enjoy it. Just flip through some of the pages and read like one or two bits of dialogue from this character and you'll be in. Yeah. Um, from AWA, which they have officially finally dropped the upshot on there because oh, I know okay. they were talking about it. But from AWA, we have issue one of Trojan, also written by Daniel Krauss. Um, this is the story of a world where fantasy characters, specifically the fae, exist, uh, fairies and things like that. And so in this world, we are following a, a young girl who finds a man on the street who is known for being able to find anything you want in any capacity and he's like what is it that you want me to find for you and she's like i i want to see i want to see pain i want to i want to experience that i want i want you to find the worst pain you can find on the internet and essentially he kind of leads her to a, a red room type experience for uh but that's led by this person who is specifically targeting the the fae culture and uh she's like yes that's what i want to see and you find out that there's this whole crazy story where she's like i'm i need to see all of this for my mom i need to do this for my mom i need to you you won't understand and it's such a weird like the whole time you're like building up to all of this and you're like where's this going and and it does lead us down a couple of different rabbit holes of story possibilities um and kind of like trickles like throws breadcrumbs in different directions and at the end of issue one i'm like i still don't know if i believe any of this girl's story and i'm really curious and the reason why is because the book is called trojan and it even has the horse in the logo so i do not trust our main character or her story at all just starting out and going into it and then the way daniel writes it i'm like i just like i'm almost agreeing with the the hacker guy yeah. i almost feel like i identify as a reader i identify more with him where i'm like what is it that you actually think you're getting to yeah. so this is an interesting story and it's not as of right now it's not like a lot of the other red room geared books like we don't actually see any of right. that this is like people talking about like oh i want to find out about that but not actually like it's not a red room book yet in any way i don't know if it'll go in that direction but uh daniel kraus uh did talk about that like oh this is one of those like one of those things where all the pe- people always bring it up and you kind of like hear people talking about it and you're like what is it that draws us to have this conversation and then like how can you take it in a different a different aspect so i'm i'm curious to see what he's going to do with it because there's a lot of really weird concepts blended together in this book and again what is the trojan horse of the whole yeah. thing so we'll see yeah we'll see where it goes um i'm gonna say let's go here <laughs> I guess I gave you the two ridiculously but like books back to back. But um, if you've ever seen The Last Samurai, <laughs> starring Tom Cruise, which as a child I loved that movie, <laughs> I thought, "Whoa, Tom Cruise is a samurai! This is awesome." Then when you become an adult, you're like, "Why is there one white guy in feudal Japan trying to save?" Feudal Japan. Feudal Japan. Like, why is it in in his hands? So this is that book uh, in a comedic satire form. Yeah. It, I thought Last Samurai was comedic satire because you no, expected me to believe not. that uh, that Come Ken on. Montanabe needed Tom Cruise to save him. Come on. That's where you're already wrong. Ken Montanabe totally 
is, is as beast. much as I agree, <laughs> it's still Tom Cruise. Oh, I'm going to disagree highly. So, I, you know, I'm fully on board for that. So, this is basically uh, if... Don't give me that look, Matt. Um, <laughs> this is basically if that story actually happened in Japanese lore. And uh, in the beginning of this, we have a grandfather who is telling uh, his grandson uh, that that story for like the millionth time. Um, and then he leaves his grandfather's house and goes about his day. And even though he is not your typical Asian, as he says, that he um, does not good at math, he doesn't know kung fu. Uh, it turns out he kind of doesn't know how to fight, though, yeah. uh, which is really interesting because it's like one page he's like, I don't know Kung Fu, but then he's like, but I can fight. Yeah. Uh, and he ends up trying to save this girl from being mugged, and it turns out that she stole his wallet. And later when he's at a restaurant with one of his friends, he notices that the waitress is that girl and decides to chase her. And what ends up happening is he goes through a door and ends up in feudal Japan. In the story, in the moment of the white savior. Yes. And um, so this is going to be not at all what I was expecting. I thought it was just going to be a straight up, this is a retelling of The Last Samurai, but more comedic. Um, but we are going to have this different aspect to it with the kid who is now mixed into this situation as well. Um, so he's going to get to see the uh, white savior basically lead all these people to death. And, you know, maybe try and change it. Who knows? Right. Maybe he'll rewrite history. Yes. Um, but, yeah, I, I think if if you've always uh, enjoyed samurai stories and want a little bit more of a comedic one and you also want to laugh about the idea of The Last Samurai, it's in combo form now. <laughs> yes. Uh, Danny says The Last Samurai is one of his all-time favorite films. It. I, it didn't hold up as much for me when I watched it later on, but I do still enjoy it. It doesn't have that same gravitas that it did when I was a kid, because I thought that that movie was brilliant as a child. But. Well, you know, at least you, at least you grew to learn. Um, up next, it's still Tom Cruise. Like I, I, you know. I'm going to disagree. Um, up next, from uh, Keen Spot as well, not a parody, yeah. uh, Tim Seeley's other book out this week, which is issue one of Lucky. Yes, and as you were saying, playing with the monsters. Playing with the monsters, a yeah. Of, uh, Universal Monsters superhero team. Yeah, this is um, this is kind of if you gave Black Cat and made Black Cat an actual cat for one. Yeah. Um, and then put her on a superhero team, and kind of saw how that went. And this kind of starts with this very thing. This girl is has all of the same powers as Black Cat. She's she's able to generate good luck for herself and cause bad luck for others, but it's not on purpose um, for the bad luck. And she realizes that in order to get good luck, she basically has to take it from other people. So she quits being a superhero because she doesn't want to impact her team in that way. And she kind of goes and like delivers pizza and is just kind of like, oh, everything sucks now when you don't like manipulate luck to work in your favor like how do people live like this in the process of all of that she uncovers a plot uh that's that's kind of not really that fanatical like it's kind of like uh the mayor of the city is going to take a bribe to change the housing ordinances and give a contract to somebody who wants to build like different housing that nobody wants and uh she finds out that that mayor is the former superhero that she used to work with. And she's like, hey, I'm not going to let, like, even, I don't care if you were a superhero, if you're doing the wrong thing, it's not cool. So she's like, I guess maybe if I'll just fight on my own, I can take luck from all the bad guys and keep it for myself and save the day. So, but like you said, all the people, it's like Van Helsing, it's Dracula, it's like, so many, like, it, once again, Tim Seeley is like, yeah. how many books can I put the Universal Monsters in? And I'm like, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. Put them in. Yeah. Them. So it's, you know, a mixture of Universal Monsters and superheroes. You know, it's kind of fun and quirky. Um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a, a fun book to read. 
you know, it'll, it'll be one of those in my pile where it's like I slide it in between the series books. Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. Speaking of books that you can slide in between serious books sometimes, we've got issue one of volume three of Barbaric from Vault Comics. This is Barbaric Hell to Pay. Did you read it? I am... How far I, behind are you? This is volume three, you said? I think so. I haven't even read volume two. Okay. I think volume two's been coming out since we've been here, so that makes sense. Okay. Um, Barbaric is a story about a, a barbarian whose name is Owen, and he is cursed by a group of witches uh, to have to do the right thing at all times. And so now he's required to help people, anybody at all that tells him they need help. He has to help them as long as their cause is just. And he has an ex that can uh, get drunk off of blood. And he is an alcoholic from blood and he can talk. So that's the premise. And now we're three volumes in and things have gone crazy. Uh, in the first volume, Owen partners with a necromancer and they've been on these missions together. Since then, he's like brought in an old ally that's joined the team. And now in volume three, Owen has been sent to hell. And they are trying to save him, and he doesn't even have his axe. So our um, our necromancer leader, as it is now, uh, has the axe and all of the magic. And I'm like, dude, she's so cool. I love her so much. Um, this is a fun book, honestly. Like, it's, it's actually, like, the longer the story goes on, the more they build into the lore, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. But the cool thing about Barbaric is all of the volumes are only three issues long. So you jump in, you get a quick story that's that's got a lot to it, it's hefty, and then uh, you move on and you get excited waiting for the next volume. So check it out if you if you like barbarian stories, but again, you want to add a little bit of comedy to it, you're definitely going to get that in volume one. But as the story goes on, you are getting more and more actual story. And like in this one, we had some, you get funny parts to more, more story at this point. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, Danny says, uh, Matt, I don't know if you saw Danny said, can you add white saver to his box? Can you make a note to save that for me? Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll give you, a yes, uh, uh, while they're doing that, I am going to, oh man, this is, this is a thing. There are two great books in my hand and I always have to, I'm going to do this one first because I gotta talk about that for a minute. So, uh, speaking of things coming back for new volumes, and I believe also volume three, um, is Maniac of New York. Don't call it a comeback issue. One from Aftershock. 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 Yeah. Yes. Uh, are you caught up on this one? I am not. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm working through volume two. Ah, so if you don't know, Maniac of New York is basically the story of Jason Takes Manhattan, if Jason had, in fact, actually taken Manhattan. Um, and it follows Maniac Harry as he goes through the five boroughs of New York um, wreaking havoc. And it also, we have a, 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 a cop, who is trying to stop it, and a woman who has a Camp Crystal Lake type experience in her past that has come on to run the maniac jurisdiction of the mayor's office. Uh, volume one was all on a, a new speed train. It was crazy. You just put Jason essentially on a speed train and said, like, you're all locked in here and this is what you're getting. Um, volume two has him going to all kinds of different places as he goes through one of the boroughs. And uh, as with all things, uh, you know, Friday the 13th, we always got to wonder who's really behind the mask. And if you can, in fact, ever end the maniac. Uh, volume three, starting now, still got Andre Andrea Moody on art, which is amazing. And uh, Elliot Kalan needs to just be given a, a Friday the 13th movie because I think Elliot's got a really good handle on how to write those Friday the 13th movies and make them pop. It would be cool to see him uh, actually do like a fun, like take this storyline and make Jason movies. Yes, it would be amazing. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, from Blood Moon Comics, we have a new one shot for Usher of the Dead. Um, and I don't, I don't even know what that actually says. Gaijin in Tokyo. 
Um, but this is, Usher of the Dead is a fantastic story that started and then got canceled and then has been giving us one shots to kind of supplement the fact that we never got the end. But it is basically about the Grim Reaper and he is, he he tells us in his first like the first volume that we had kind of how he works with death and how he brings people over and how when we cross over like he, you know we're all just the same to him. Uh, this particular one shot takes place like I said in Japan and it follows a woman who is in an abusive relationship and ends up maybe killing her significant other um, and as like the police are investigating and everything he comes in to usher the body to the dead and it's kind of a conversation between the woman who's like asked for this death and the neighbor and the usher of the dead to kind of figure out who he's actually there for um it's a really really cool story and the whole time the conversation like you can't tell who actually can see him and who can't and who, like, it, it really, like, flows really well. Almost like Carmen in the way where you're, like, is Carmen having these conversations with other people? Is she actually, or is she just kind of, like, talking out loud? Um, this was a great one for that. Uh, if you've read the original Usher of the Dead story or the previous one shot, you, you have to get this. Because, it's once again, it's just beautifully done. Uh, fantastic storytelling. I cannot wait. Literally, just, like... Give us another whole volume of Usher of the Dead, like, or, like, just, you know, a big, massive story with him because he's such a cool character. I love his design, and I love the way he interacts, and I love the, the way he talks about death. It's so good. Blood Moon, killing it with this title. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's cool if they do the one-shots, if that's going to yeah. at least allow them to put, put some of out. the issues out. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. I like that. I remember that first issue was a pick of the week for us. It was, yes. Um, speaking of picks of the week, we're going to jump over to those now. Um, and we're going to kick it off with Rogue State issue two from Black Mask Comics. Yes. I have recently gone on uh, a stance of saying that every comic book that exists should be in a prestige format. As annoying as that would be. Uh, but this is Rogue State, and this is uh, kind of a concept that mirrors a little bit of society, or potentially what society could be heading towards, which is a world where um, basically anyone can be the police. Um, and there are a ton of gangs uh, out there, um, and private militaries, all that kind of stuff, and it's a very chaotic world. Um, and in this, we have a character named Dust Girl, who is kind of a vigilante, but also mainly just a pusher of drugs mm -hmm. um, with her boyfriend. And in this issue, we kind of see Dust Girl going around the city, um, passing off drugs in clubs, and trying to keep a low profile. Uh, but we also kind of go back to how... It, or, I don't think that's how issue one ended, but um, a, a major part in issue one, which is a riot breaks out outside of their apartment, and um, this is kind of where that goes, and it leads into some crazy stuff, uh, and also maybe introduces a new character. Yeah. So this book, for me, I, I just, I'm here for the art mostly. Um, but I do love this character. Dust Girl is like one of those where I'm like, oh, I want merchandise. Like, give me an action figure with the scooter that she rides around, um, t-shirts, all sorts of stuff. I'm I'm fully on board for this book. It is. Our issue one was uh, was a pick of the week as well, I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look at this. <laughs> uh, this art is so fantastic. The colors. This is hats off to the creative team on this book, but. Um, I'm excited to see where this universe goes. I, I'm really hoping they open it up and very much like um, Something is Killing the Children or um, Radiant Black. It's one of those where I would love to like see spinoffs of some of the side characters and like give me more of this. Just give me all of this. Um, but yeah, I, I love this book. It is, I when I saw the issue two it came out this week, I was like, this is one of the first books I'm gonna read. 
But yeah, Rogue State, pick it up. You know, I know it's prestige format, but I promise it's worth it. Uh, a book for me that will never not be in the picks of the week. If it comes out, it's in the pick of the week. Uh, is issue three of Vanity from uh, Black Caravan, which is awesome. I love this book so much. Uh, this is the story of Elizabeth Bathory, who is a real person, partially assumed to be part of the inspiration for Dracula, uh, believed to be the first female serial killer in, in history. Um, who knows? The oh, world, oh, the world may believe all those things. A lot of people just believe that she was a feminist who didn't take any of the standards of society to her own, uh, to like as her own rules. And this book is kind of giving us the that might be the story, but also gives us it's it's black caravan, so I know there's going to be a horror element that we haven't hit yet. Um, and it kind of builds that tension. If you do know Elizabeth Bathory, you're like, is this the moment? Is this where she starts doing these things? Um, but issue three finds Elizabeth. Uh, she's living on her own in her castle, which is a part of why everybody thought, like, you know, they made up all these myths and stuff. And she shows up to a party uh, wearing pants. Like, she's wearing a soldier's uniform, essentially. And they're like, where did you get that from? And she's like, this is how I dress. And she's there to to tell them, like, at this point, we've started burning women as witches. And she's like, well, why are they witches? But your alchemists, like, over here aren't. Like, that's literally witchcraft. And these women are just living their lives. But you're burning women and you're not burning men. Like, I feel like there's a problem here. And she's just calling out, like, these royals and these people, these nobles. Um, and she can because she's in that same, like, they're, like, her cousins. Like, she is, she is royal. And so she's like, um, no, this isn't right. If you're going to do that, you've got to do it to everybody or you got to admit that you're just sexist. And so it's fantastic. You get this really cool art. I love the way that they draw people's faces in this book. Like, as she's sitting there saying this stuff, you actually see, like, the, huh, like what like on their faces and the the people in the background getting confused by the things she's saying um great book i can't wait to see where this goes um this i believe it says this is the end of uh, volume one i think yeah, okay. um uh but we'll see we're gonna get uh more to come for sure on this story uh the coolest thing about it is is actually a creative team from the carpathian mountains area uh so it's really cool to hear them talk about it like this is they've like lived in the shadow of this castle essentially like their whole lives and they've heard these stories and so it's cool to see a team telling a story that is local to them and kind of giving it this new life and I can't wait to see what <laughs> happens. It's so well done. Yeah. And talk about books that need to be movies. Mm, man. Is just, there any Elizabeth Bathory movies? I don't know. Honestly, I can't think of one. If you're watching this on, on Facebook or YouTube and you know of an Elizabeth Bathory movie, please tell us. Like, I don't know if there's one directly. I feel like there's yeah. a lot that, like, circumvent the thing. But I can't think of one that is just about her. Um, and if you are watching this and you feel like giving a very expensive gift, I know that's the, you know, the Todd McFarlane Elizabeth Bathory toy exists. <laughs> yeah, it's called Bathory Countess of Blood. Oh, really? 2008. 2008? I don't even know where I was then. Oh, nice. It's... Let's watch it. Yeah. Let's find it. I'd be curious what kind of movie that is. Yeah. You know, is that going to be one with a really cool metal soundtrack and it's really bad, but the soundtrack's great? That's the vibe I get with those kinds of I movies. I mean, 2008, would it be new metal then? Oh, I guess it'd be a little after new metal. Right, be a little post-new metal. I don't know. Mm. We got to see. I don't know. We're going to have to watch it and find out. I feel like this is completely wrong, but I, I almost want to say that she was like the female character in uh, that Van Helsing movie with Hugh Jackman. She was not. But, yeah. I don't think that was. No. That I was, just remember there being a cool... That was Mina. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was yeah. Mina. <laughs> um, where I'm like, let's not go down the Universe Monsters yeah, Trail anymore. We will be here all night. Um, and speaking of monsters, uh, issue two of West Moon Chronicle from Scout is out. Another one that I think you read both issues today. I did. I missed issue one when it came out, but I remember when I saw the cover for this one, I was like, oh, I kind of want to read this book. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, you should. Seems very interesting. Not at all what I was expecting, but also pleasantly surprised. 
Uh, this book um, is embedded in like Korean folklore, mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of tied around shapeshifters and demons and a lot of other really wonderful things. But this art in this book is why it's my pick of the week. This book is beautiful. Uh, it is the story of a young man uh, named Jason who goes and visits his grandfather in a small Texas town in hopes uh, of selling their home. And uh, yeah, the, this page, this page, is this the one the, where you have to twist it in multiple okay. directions to read it? Yes. I'll, I'll kind of twist it. I was a little confused by which way to twist it this in this one. I was a little I read like, it like three times. Wait, how does this go? Because I think it goes kind of like this way, maybe into a weird one. But yeah, the paneling in this is super cool. Um and so he goes to his grandfather in hopes that uh, he will sell his property. And it turns out that the girl that went with him to convince his grandfather is actually a nine-tailed fox. Um, and this kind of kicks off this uh, crazy adventure. And uh, at the end of issue one, he is uh, reunited with uh, an old flame and the mother to his child, which he abandoned. Um, a long time ago and they now have to save their daughter yeah from door it there's so much to this they built a lot of lore really fast and very quickly and you're just like wait who what when where yeah. and then you catch up and you're like oh my god and like like you said the art's so good that oh, like so even good. when in the pages where you're like i should be focusing to figure out what they're talking about yeah. you're like i don't care it's so pretty like this here sorry to interrupt you no. but i really love this page because i love that the red panel she's like super angry mm -hmm. but then as she slow gets less angry um it kind of goes to orange and then yellow but then it cuts to him and it's blue mm -hmm, and he he's very sad about what happened so i the the art in this book is insane and the story is really good yeah. too like you're still getting like again they built this lore like i slowed down uh when i was reading the first issue that's kind of how i felt i was like oh man i'm like overwhelmed with how many things are coming in and so i slowed down and i started reading it and i was like wow this is going to be a really beautiful story mm -hmm. for the world building and for this art and you're and you are using a lot of the storytelling through the art in mm -hmm. that emotion and i we talk about that on the live stream a lot that when people use the color to tell the emotion it really blends the story perfectly and this book is definitely one of those where it's like oh. uh, the creators had actually posted like a couple weeks ago that it was out and I literally I'm in a group chat that has some in it and I like never respond to group chats and I was like no it's not and I was like because I don't have it and I need issue two I'm watching for it and they were like are you sure and I was like I'm watching for it I need yeah. to know what happened because it's like issue one left on such a big cliffhanger I was like no I've been waiting to know what is going on yeah uh so I'm glad issue two is here this is definitely a book worth checking out yeah I would say this is probably one of the most beautiful books on the shelf right now um and honestly i was I, after i read this i was like okay i've been kind of sort of trying to plan a trip to go down to the scout store and now i want to just find a bunch of variants for this uh because it it has everything like i usually i'm not into like super like high concept fantasy books mm -hmm. especially ones that are like deeply rooted in uh, a type of folklore yeah because i don't know and there's a lot of things where i feel like there's so much rich rich history with with a lot of these types of creatures that they're bringing in so yeah i'm, I'm very excited to see where it goes i'm all in on that one for sure yes um <laughs> and speaking of reasons to go to the scout store almost yeah. all of our picks of the week were scout uh, usually we it's the, how it goes it's, it's a fair assumption uh this is lost souls haywire it is technically a one shot, but Lost Souls is going to be a series of one shots that is going to uh, solve a mystery. Like we talked about, there's a lot of murder mysteries going on. This is a major murder mystery, like a whole community essentially. 2,600 people. 2,600 people are all randomly dead. And uh, this is supposed to be the story you think this is going to be the story of solving that because it is a right. one shot so you're like oh we're going to interview all the different people and we're going to solve it 
but it actually ends up being just one person's story. And we find out what one particular man was doing that day, and immediately it jumps from the story about the murder to that guy's story. And it's just that guy's story. And tell them what that story is. Yeah, so it's uh, this this guy who is really great because he actually tells the narrative of this story from a jail cell. Um, and he tells basically his last day uh, on this job that he works at um, for a company called Impact. And it's all tied into robotics mm-hmm. um, and just making sure that these robots run smoothly and doing their jobs. And he is what is referred to as a chimp. And I need to see what that stands for. What that stands for. So it stands for Cybernetic Habitual Improvement Mechanic Personnel. His job is basically to sit in a room and run a test with each robot that comes in. And he determines if it's faulty, if it's it's malfunctioning, if it needs to send back for reprogramming. Um, And so this is his last day on the job. He's ready to get out. Uh, But the night before, him and his friends went out bar hopping, and he decided to um, abandon the bar without paying for his tab, and is kind of concerned that he could get in trouble and jeopardize uh, it being his last day. Uh, And it is, it's crazy where this book goes, and you're just like, I was not expecting no. this at all, but also kind of sort of expecting it, but also just being, I got so immersed into this. And it's funny too, because you get to the end of this book and you're like, okay, well, wait, hold on. We didn't even talk about the We didn't even talk about the, the thing died. at the beginning. I know. I totally <laughs> thought that I had started reading one book and then moved to another one in the best way possible. Yeah. Because now I'm like, I, I flipped it to the front immediately to see if it said nonstop on the mm-hmm. cover. Because if you know Scout, a lot of times they'll put out one book and then it'll be a nonstop and you get the trade. And I literally was like, no, it's not a nonstop, which means I'm going to have to wait for multiple books because they told us how many suspects they had at the beginning and that they were going to interview each of these people. And then we only interviewed one. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be like a 12 part series, but each one is a one shot. Like, what are we going to do with this? And also, are they all going to be this detailed and this, like, crazy of stories? Because if so, make as many one-shots as you want. You could interview all 2,600 people that died at yeah. that point, and I'd still be in. Because this was so well done. But what's weird, though, too, is, like, I love this story so much. And then I got to the end, and I was like, wait, how does this even tie in? What the yeah. hell all of it? No <laughs> like, idea. Like, are we just telling random stories? Also, this character, the dude in the hat that's just, like, hanging out at this table... I love that character design. He looks so cool, and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Right, you're like, I'm going to cosplay that guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I this book completely surprised me. Uh, I was here at the shop yesterday to knock out some of the reading, and I got towards the end of the reading pile, and this was on there, and I was like, ah, I don't know, it's a one-shot. I may not read it. Oh, I'm so glad I read it. <laughs> this was, I got done with it, and I was like, this is pick of the week. Easily pick of the week. It's... And just to know that we're just going to get a bunch more of these. Yeah, Lost Souls books. There's at least three customers who kind of have similar reading tastes to, to like, the blended version of you and me. And when they came in, I literally was like, here. And they're like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, yes, you do. Yeah. You do. Like, you want this. And, And so I was like, when I asked you, I was like, did you, you put it on the pick of the week pile? And I was like, right, right. That's, like, all I had to say. And you were like, I didn't even know what that book was. And it's great. And it's seven ninety nine. I will not lie to you, but you're obviously, as we just said, getting like three different stories in one. So yeah, I, it's definitely worth the eight dollar price point, in my opinion, because yeah. it it does stand alone by itself. Um, I really like the art and the story that they tell in this. It's just it's so solid, and to know that it is just a small piece of a larger puzzle excites me even more. Because I got done, I was like. I loved this story, but we still have this other major thing we really need to talk about. I really about. need to know what happened with the 2,600 people. So, but also, if you're going to, like, slowly drag that out through a ton of different stories, as long as they're all this caliber, you yeah. can drag it on for as long as you want. And I will complain, but I will keep coming back and loving every <laughs> second of it. Yeah, I. this is one I definitely... 
Like, I feel like out of the four picks of the week, this was probably the one where I was like, this is the one you gotta read. And I find it um, one of those things, like, they tell you when you're pitching a book for the first time, like, in any format, like, that you need to tell the create, like, the you tell your publisher, like, oh, it can stand alone, or it's a part of this thing. And usually it's the way you end it. Yeah. And the fact that this was, like, the way it began yeah. was where your cliffhanger was is kind of just an interesting way to play with storytelling in general. Yeah. So, good job. Yeah. And you can also just ignore, like, the first two pages, and it's still a wonderful standalone story. Yeah. All right, let me grab these. Matt, what are you talking about, Mr. Freeze versus Raiden? That's what they look like. Oh. In the, the That's totally, that yeah, like, that was up at the time. Yeah. Like Mr. Freeze and Raiden. That's totally true. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, we've got a bunch more books in stock, and some of them I wanted to talk about, but I had to go back and reread too many books to get to this one, so I'm going to do a quick one. The uh, first one up from Double Stew Comics, this is issue three, or volume three, as you may call it, of uh, The Encoded, which is like the whole world with super advanced technology, and then like an, they have an analog moment and everything goes crazy. Issues one and two were really, really good, um, and I just... I needed to go back and, like, double-check some things before I jumped into it, and I didn't get to, but I mm. definitely cannot wait to see what happens in that. Okay. Um, from Opus Comics, issue three of Eternal Descent, this is a girl who is like, oh, I've got all of the power of the gods, essentially, by playing this guitar, and uh, Loki and Thor are mad about it. Um, Eve, Children of the Moon, volume two, issue four, from Boom Studios, is out again, and this bear just keeps being a problem. Um, Vault, uh, issue eight of West of Sundown, speaking of Tim Seeley and Universal Monsters, this is kind of the one that kicked it off recently for him. Uh, you've got Universal Monsters in the Wild Wild West. Uh, a book that I have been waiting for, but I am super behind on, is issue, uh, four of Endangered, and I can't wait to catch up. I think I'm, like, one issue behind, but I... This book has been so good. Do, do, do they have... I don't want to open it too much, but, like, this had, like, some super cool art, and I wanted to see if any of the creatures were there again. I don't know. Oh, even just right there. Like, oh, there's so many cool creatures in this. Like, you, I'm not even going to spoil it, because you got to read it. Um, issue four of three keys from Image Comics is out this week. We have the return of House of Slaughter, volume three, starting on issue 11, and this is the return of Jace. So if you read volume one of House of Slaughter, you're bringing back Jace. You also bringing back, uh, Tate Bromble on writing. Sure. Uh, issue five of Alien is out this week. Look at that cool cover. I'm super into it. Um, the Avengers, uh, this is a Marvel Tells, it does, Marvel Tells, it doesn't actually say that on the front, but it's Avengers 2, Wonder Man, and the Beast, which Ooh. makes me think we'll probably get a Wonder Man series coming, uh, right before we get the Wonder Man first appearance in the MCU. Um, what? there's, allegedly, that's the thing, is we're gonna get Wonder Man, that's what mm. people keep saying. I'm just, obviously we are, we're gonna get Vision Quest, and we're getting oh, our yeah. West Coast Avengers, so you gotta have Wonder Man, they gotta bring him in sometime. That's the speculation. You're definitely leading me to believe that's the case. Um, Avengers Forever, issue 13, with this demonized Howard the Duck cover, I had that's to bring that. Great. Uh, Batman Superman World's Finest, issue 11. We've got Bane, uh, Batman One Bad Day, and this is the Bane version of that. Uh, Batman Fortress issue eight out this week. Deadpool issue three out this week. Uh, Dark Crisis, that's not right. Um, that's not the one that was there. That's Dark Crisis Infinite or seven, but there should have been the Lazarus Planet in the front, so it looks like uh, we sold through a bunch of those. Uh, Flash issue 791 out. Uh, Ryan Otley doing the Hulk on issue 11. Uh, Invincible Iron Man issue 2. This is a brand new Iron Man series that just launched a couple weeks ago. Um, Old Dog issue 3 from Declan Shalvey. I need to read this. I, I'm, I know I missed issue 2 and so now I gotta catch up. Uh, I read issue Punisher two. issue 9 out. Uh, I know you've got, like you said at the beginning of the show, a theory on this, so I'm gonna... I, I do. I'm going to have to figure out what that is I at some, some point. Uh, new champion of Shazam. This is, uh, we're going to call her Mary Marvel. I don't care what you want to call her, but this Mary Marvel will get in a mini series. Uh, and that is the end of it. It was four part series and it is over. Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man issue three written by Taboo. 
Uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca issue 8 out this week. Strange issue 10 out this week. I know we know that uh, Doctor Strange is coming back if he hasn't already, but it's nice to see Clea. What? He's coming back? He's coming back. I thought he was dead. We never... He, you know he stays dead in Marvel Comics. Uh, Bounty Hunters issue 30 out this week. Immortal X-Men issue 10. The Dark Web Saga continues with issue 3 of the X-Men. I didn't get to read this and totally for us to tell you to grab oh, it. Dang. But the Wasp issue 1 is out. I'm so excited. This is Al Ewing, how he did the Ant-Man series. Now he's doing a Wasp series. I'm Ooh. very excited for that. Uh, Wakanda issue 4 out this m- m- week as well. I know that was a hot book this week too. Um, Venom issue 15. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 135 is out this week with, look at that Jenica on the cover. Um, We also have part four of the Armageddon game from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out this week. Uh, Walking Dead issue 55. This is a Walking Dead Deluxe, the color reprints of Walking Dead. If you didn't know, coming up soon, we're going to have the Invincible Undeluxe, where we're going to get black and white reprints of all the Invincible issues. Um, (laughs) Gru, Gods Against Gru, issue 2, out from Dark Horse this week. Resident Alien, uh, the Book of Love, issue 3, of 4, from Dark Horse. Spider-Man, The Lost Hunt, issue 3, this is your um, Traven story, I believe. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Namor, Submariner, issue four. Uh, we've got, and I guess it's Conquered Shores is the tagline, uh, or the subline. Uh, GCPD, The Blue Wall, issue four as well, with that cool Frank Villa cover. Um, Star Trek Resurgence, issue three from IDW. Looky here, it happened. Gaiga issue five wow. from Vault Comics. That was like a year delay between Yikes. four and five. Everybody thought it was over, but guess what? It isn't. Titans United Blood Pact issue five of six. Monkey Prince issue 10. If you haven't been reading this, uh, it's hilarious. It's wonderful. And uh, Monkey Prince is apparently going to save the entire DC universe now. Um, and then Batgirls issue 14. Look at that beautiful art germ cover. Uh, this has been a, a fun series as well, um, and I, I absolutely love the color, cover. And here it is, issue 100 Dang. of Nightwing. Congratulations, Nightwing, Tom Taylor, and all of the team that worked on that. And that is a beautiful acetate <clears throat> cover uh, that wraps around with all the different, like, Nightwing and, his, like, in the front with all his uh, people if you want to show the back. Oh, what? Show the back. Show the back, because Scott Nightwing with yeah, all of his, like, people uh, who have been with him throughout. This is such a cool uh, such cool cover, such a cool idea to give Nightwing his moment of um, 100 issues. And Tom Taylor's series has just been a fan favorite the whole time. Yeah, I bought volume one, because yes. it was in a hardcover. Yes. And then I read it, and I was like, now I see why everyone loves this book so much one bruno redondo's art is fantastic um but tom taylor has just been telling such a good nightwing story yes um yeah if you're a dc fan if you like the batman universe and all his side characters this is the book yeah we got some trades in stock this week um coming at you From Chris Condon and Jacob Phillips, we've got Volume 3 of That Texas Blood, which includes issues 14 through 19. Uh, If you haven't read That Texas Blood, you have to read it. It's fantastic. Talk about your murder mysteries, but this one continues to go um, through different times in a sheriff in a small town in West Texas. His life, he's kind of just... Seems to keep recalling all these different murders that happen. Um, the first one in the first volume, it was the thing that was happening in the moment, but now he's kind of just gotten like you know, a lot of stuff's happened. And volumes two and three have been uh, him reliving some moments that were tragic in the past and kind of giving him a chance to play with the different time periods. It was super good. Um, also out this week is Above Snakes. Uh, speaking of Hayden Sherman's art, like we were talking about earlier, uh, this is a crazy book i love that they call it deadwood style um western like collides with the fantastic uh, in the story of dirt honestly everything every time i think of this book i will never think of anything but 
the bird trying to figure out how he was going to woo a female bird and the human that his his companion like talking him through how to like puff up his chest and be cool <laughs> and like the little song and dance that this bird practiced it was that alone worth the read um we've got volumes one and two of barbaric in trade paperback form they so far they've only come out in hardcover this is the first time we've had like the actual paperback versions of barbaric so if you are looking to catch up before you jump into volume three we do have those and um i believe one of these will include the i believe it's this one includes the one shot that came in there as well okay um volume one of maniac of new york if you're looking to also catch up on that before you jump in this is the death train we also have um most of if not all of the volumes of i hate fairyland in stock um, I know a lot of people have been like, oh, this book looks so cool. I've never read it before. Just know there's a $10 volume one to get you started yeah. on I Hate Fairyland. And out this week as well is volume one of Public Domain from Chip Zdarsky. This is basically a Stanley Jack Kirby kind of situation where a man who created a lot of characters uh, for a big conglomerate of comic bookness uh was not given his due and when his family finds out that he actually does have paperwork that proves he owns all of the characters uh they they kind of decide should we sue or should we just take our characters back um really heartfelt story of a son who is down on his luck and a dad who feels like nobody really cared about any you know his who he is now and the two of them kind of coming together and saying like okay maybe what we need the most is each other fantastic if you didn't read it this is volume one i hope we get another volume soon um because it's it's just chips at rc doing chips at rc things he had a good year he did 2022 was a good year for chips at rc yeah absolutely batman daredevil the public domain. Public domain. <laughs> was, I mean, I think every year is a good year for multi yeah. Eisner winner Chips at Arts. True. <laughs> um, so we've got a lot of great books. Uh, there are a lot of good ones coming out this week. I just had it pulled up. Let me tell you what we got. Um, Saga is back this week with issue 61. Uh, Monstrous Issue 42 is out this week. The Sins of Sinister event for the Spider-Man uh, Marvel World does start this week. Junkyard Joe number four is out. Uh, where did they go? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, the Last Ronin, The Lost Year, Issue 1, out this week. Cream Show Issue 5 out this week. Damn Them All, Issue 4. Gargoyles Issue 2 is supposed to be out this week. Once Upon a Time at the End of the World, issue number three. TMNT, Ninja, uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, volume two, issue two is out. Behold Behemoth, number three, out this week. Uh, Hitomi, number four. Sandman's uh, Dead Boy Detectives, issue two, out this week. TMNT, Saturday Morning Adventures, four. All the TMNT. Darkwing Duck, number one. Yes. Love Sick, number four. Inferno Girl Red, the new part of the Radiant Black World, is out with issue one. Hell to Pay, issue three. Plush, issue three. Samurai Doggy, issue three, is supposed to be out this week. I'm excited. That's another one that's been on a major delay. Boogie Man number five. Nightwalkers number one. Uh, Year Zero, Volume Zero, number four. Vineyard number three. Oh, man, another one much delayed. Uh, Voyages, issue three. Traveling to Mars, issue three. Uh, there are so many more. Uh, Rick and Morty has a new number one out this week. Green Hornet has a new oh. one out this week. I know I waited for that for you. I knew you'd love that. Um, Playthings issue four finally out. Oh my god, I almost took it off the wall. I was losing my hope. Uh, Legacy of Violence issue four. Archie versus the World issue one. Dead Seas number two from IEW's original imprint. Uh, Quested number two. Mr. Easter number three might be out this week. We'll see. Nice. Pink Lemonade number five. Number two was delayed for a long time. Uh, um, My Bad Volume 2 Issue 3 is out this sweet. week. Uh, Mysterium Issue 3 is out this week. Road Trip to Hell number two. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many. Zombie Sides uh, Day 1 Issue 1 out this week. 
Uh, Dahlia in the Dark, issue two from Mad Cave out this week. Nervous Rex is out. I'm, what is that one? I'm like going to click on it. Did I order this? Uh, it's a cute little book about a dinosaur, obviously, oh, <laughs> who's super scared. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I don't, know the week. This, I don't know what this is, but it looks cute. I don't know if we got it. It looks like it's little kid. Um, look at that. I know, I saw it. Okay. It's going to be too adorable. I hope, I hope it's as cute as it looks. Um, I, and there was something else that was on there maybe. No, okay, so those are all out this week. There is a ton of new comics. <laughs> um, since I brought it up, that Mysterium, the comic is out this week. Don't forget to check out Mysterium Escape Room. Uh, they are amazing, awesome, wonderful escape rooms. We've they've got the four rooms. They did say you can go do one by yourself. I'm very excited. To I was see told how this there's goes. a time, there's a, a record. That there was is set a by... record for the best and the worst time. Yeah. So I would like to see uh how you do. Um, I'm gonna set. I'm gonna break one of those. One of those. Which one? And they uh, <laughs> which one is gonna be the key? Uh, and uh, they were they provided this amazing wine for us tonight. Yeah. Uh, this is from the Mixon Farms. This is raspberry. the Raspberry White Zinfandel. Um, I, I need a straight white wine now to know how I truly feel about white wine. So it's funny because like with white wine, especially with Zinfandels and things like this, uh, I was always taught you should drop a fruit into it. Mm. So the fact that like it's already got the fruit flavor, it just kind of saves you from having to go out and get the fruit to drop into it. Okay. So. You know, um, I really want to go try mixing fruits and see what they got. I honestly just really want fresh fruits orange juice. So I don't know if they'll give me a fresh, fresh squeezed orange juice, but I want a fresh Florida orange squeezed into juice, juice in front of me that I can drink. That's all I want. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's my dream. I just got to get that to happen. Um, that's something I'm going to work on this week. Uh, but we have so many things going on at Bat City uh, all week long. It's going to be another amazing week. We do have a special extra superhero story time this Saturday um, at 1130. So usually that's only the second Saturday of the month. But we do have an extra one this Saturday. I'm excited. Uh, come join us for that. As always, there will be fun crafts in the classroom all week long. We're going to be here on Wednesday for New Comic Book Day. It sounds like it's going to be a great one. I'm excited. You're excited. Hopefully you're excited. Uh, we'll talk about it all in detail next Sunday night at 9 p.m. here on Facebook as we wind down your weekend. If you are joining us on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe um, and keep an eye out for the next episode to pop up for you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. Happy reading. Bye.